Hello, welcome back all my dear students. After a gap of some days, we are continuing with our class 10 English with me, the same teacher that have been teaching you before. And today we are going to do a topic on grammar, that is Grammar Worksheet 4, which deals with speech or narration. Here, I want you to know that speech and narration is the same thing. There are times that students get confused because the question says, change the narration instead of speech because speech is the more common word that your teachers have been using all through your high school life but i want you to be very clear if there's anyone still confused with these two different words you have to keep in mind that it's all the same and you will find all the explanations of speech or narration on page number 124 till 130. we have some exercises to follow up but please do not expect your teachers to solve all the exercises for you. We are giving you the explanations so that it will help you to solve all your exercises by yourself. And to do that, I want you to pay special attention to what I'm going to explain today. Here in English, grammar is a very important part of the book. We think that it's important to read the story. Of course, I do not deny that. But unless your grammar is good, it will be difficult for you to answer your questions as well as for you to understand your story. Sometimes you can make a big change just by changing the tense or adding an extra word, an extra letter to a word. That is why it is always very important to pay attention to grammar explanations. Some students think that listening to the explanation is not so important in grammar because once you get all the answers correctly in your exercises that is given to you by your teachers or you can find from different sources in this present day. But if at all the teacher twists the questions or the teacher changes the sentence, it becomes difficult for any student to solve it for the ones who do not listen to the explanation. So here, we will be doing direct and indirect speech. We have two types of speech that is direct and indirect speech. Here, indirect speech is also called as reported speech. Okay, Indirect is called reported speech. Why? Because it is not the direct word that the speech speaker have already spoken. You, if I tell you something, you go and report my word to some of your friends, that is indirect speech, it's as simple as that. Reporting someone's original word to another person or to the third person is called reported speech or indirect speech. If your teachers tell you something, you go and say it, maybe an information. You want to go and convey the same message to your parents, I'm sure you all don't use the same sentence that your teacher has told you. Example, the teacher said, tomorrow will be a working day. You don't go and say the same thing to your parents. You say, the teacher said that tomorrow will be a working day, right? Or the next day will be a working day. There will be some changes that you will be learning step by step. And once you get to know all the details on this, I'm, I bet it's going to be very, very easy for you and you will never struggle with speech again. In the direct speech, the, the punctuations in the direct and indirect will differ a little bit. Here, if, if you find a sentence with exclamation mark, you know what is exclamation mark, right? In a, you will find a sentence in exclamation mark, the same cannot be used because in the reported speech or in direct speech, you have to use only the full stop. So the punctuations changes. There may be a lot of other punctuations in the direct speech, but that cannot be followed. It has to be different in the indirect speech. You will find inverted commas. You know what are inverted commas, right? A comma that is on top, not in the usual place. So inverted commas are used only when you want to cut something. If you want to quote the exact word of the speaker, of the person who was speaking, then only you can use the inverted commas. Whereas in the indirect speech or reported speech, you will avoid all those things except the full stop. And full stop is a necessity. We all know that. After every sentence stops, we know that we have to put a full stop. So it's as simple as that. And you will also see the tense changes. Tenses are the things that tells us whether the action happening is presently before or it will be afterwards that means we have three main tenses the present the past and the future so if the tense of the direct speech is in present you have to change that into the past tense again 
So your tens have to change a lot of times, not a lot of times, almost every time. When I say that, I want you to remember something here in tense. We have a word called the reporting verb in the direct speech. Let me write it down for you. Reporting verb. And then the reporting verb. Let me cite an example for you here. The teacher said. The word said becomes the reporting verb here. So here the reporting verbs in the indirect speech will change depending on the sentences. Imperative sentence. Imperative in other words means statement. If you are stating something that your teachers have told you or some other speakers have told you, you have to change. For statement, you can say told, said, all those things can be used. The, those are called the reporting verbs. And in the indirect speech, reporting verb is very important again for you to change according to the sentence that was given in the direct speech. And then in the imperative sentence. Imperative means orders or request. You know the types of sentences, right? In the order, in the sentences which deals with order, you have to say, she ordered me to go out of the room immediately. So the reporting verb tells you that the sentence is an order. And just by looking at the question or the sentence given in the direct speech, it's very easy for a student to know whether it's an order or not. So when you are doing that, I want you to remember that it is always very important to change the reporting verbs according to the tone of the sentence. And in a sentence which asks question, I want you to know that you have to change the reporting verb again. If it is yes or no question, you know what is yes or no question, right? If I say, did you have your food? It's yes or no. You have to answer either yes or no. You have no other, we have no other answers for that. And in a sentence which deals with yes or no question, you have to use if or whether. For questions, you have to use if or whether. These two can be used as reporting verb. She asked me whether I will be going to school or not. That is also a yes or no question. And that is the reason why I am using whether. You can even use if depending on the sentences that you see. And there are some questions which are not yes or no. You can go like this. She asked me what I was doing at that moment. If someone says, what are you doing? And you are going to change that sentence into indirect speech. You have to say, she asked me what I was doing. See, here I'm trying to bring the tense also. What are you doing? The word are is a present tense, right? It's also a verb. And so, are had been changed into where. She asked or was depending on the numbers. If it is a plural, you will have to use the word where. If it is a singular, you have to use was. So this is how you change your sentences. She asked me what I was doing at that moment. So we see the change, the changes that differs from the direct speech and the indirect speech. This is how your reporting verbs are important. And if you see a request, what do you do? She requested me to switch on the light. If someone says, please switch on the lights. The word please itself tells us that a request has been made. So in this, you don't have to keep thinking on whether it's a question or a request. The word please itself had told us that that was a request. So in this kind of sentences, you have to say request that she requested me to leave the room. Please leave the room. That If that is in a polite tone, you can say she requested me to. And there are some sentences that are exceptional, which I'm going to tell you right now. If your sentence or your direct speech starts with a verb, do not go out of the room. Here, we do not know whether it is an order, a request, or a statement. Of course, it's imperative, but we cannot make it out whether it's an order or a request. The speaker or that person might also be making a request or an order. So in this case, what you can do is, when your sentence starts with a verb, you have to use the word let. Okay, mm, write down your name. Let me use that sentence because that is going to be more simpler. Write down your name. If you find that sentence and your teachers have asked 
you to change that into indirect speech. What do you do? You have to use the word let, L-E-T, let. I repeat, when your sentence starts with a verb, remember to use the word let. If you cannot make it out, whether it's a request or an order. So what I'm going to give you right, right now is, let your name be written down. Write down your name can be changed into, let your name be written down. Because the word do is a verb. In other words, it's an action word, right? And so that is why we have to use the word let. Let me give you, let me cite another example. Pick up the pen. So what do we do? Let the pen be picked up. And one more thing that I want you to know here is the use of tense. See, pick up the pen, the word pick is a verb. And when you change it into indirect speech, let the pen be picked up. This is a common mistake that students make. When you see the word be, the following word, that is the verb has to be in the past tense every time you write it down. Do not make the mistake of writing this in present tense again. Every time you see the word be or you want to use the word be in your sentence, the following word, which is the verb, because most of the time the word be is followed by a verb. And in that case, remember to put past tense in the verb every time, because unless you give that, your sentence become a total distraction. You might be doing everything correctly, but because you did not add the word ed or en in depending on the type of sentences. So unless you put this, your grammar worksheets or your grammar answers that you have been learning your the whole year will become a useless thing for you because teachers are not going to give you marks for that. Plus, the listeners or the readers would find it difficult to understand or they find it difficult to be unacceptable. This is what happens in grammar. That is the reason why I'm saying it's very important to listen to the explanations in grammar. And the the language that you speak will also brand you, uh, give you brand sometimes. I'm not going to stress on that, but we know that when a person speaks good language, we also have the liking for those kind of people. And it also makes easier for the listeners to understand. And that is the reason why you have to pay attention to the small items that I'm teaching you. We also have the models. You know what are models? The model verbs, that is, can will, may, all the, all shall, all these things are model. And if you find a model verb, what do you do? In, if you find a model in the direct speech, you have to change the model verb. Though it may not be an action word. Many times we consider the verbs to be action words only, but we also have verbs called the auxiliary verbs and the model verbs. And in this model, it's very, very important for you to change the tense. If I use the word can, can I borrow your pen? That sentence in the indirect speech she she asked me if she could borrow my pen that is the thing that changes can has been changed into could and shall will be changed to should may might this will will be changed into would these are called the model verbs and it is very very important for everyone for any one of us including the teachers to change the model verbs when you are changing the tense of your sentences. These are some main points that I would like all of you to keep in mind once again. A brief recap of what I just thought now. Punctuations, remember there will be different types of punctuations in the direct speech, but those things will all be changed except the full stop. In the indirect speech or reported speech, you can use only a full stop and leave all the other punctuations. And then in the tenses, the tense will be changed to past tense every time in the reporting verb. Because the, even if this is in present tense, it has to be changed compulsorily to the past tense when you are writing a, report, a reported speech or indirect speech. And the models, as I've mentioned just now, some examples can be can, could, may, might, all those things has to be changed even if it is in the present tense, and then the reporting verb. I have to stress one more point here on the reporting verb. Since I have said that all your tenses have to be changed to the past tense, you, you are now well aware that in the indirect speech, your tenses have to be changed, but there is one exception here. When, if you get a question with the reporting verb says, okay, I want you to 
take note of this when you see the reporting verb says the teacher says it is important to study the book or to read the book since the reporting verb is in present tense you you have no right and you cannot change the sentence into past tense again okay even though i have told you that your tenses will be changed to past tense every time you do the indirect speech it cannot be applied here when the reporting verb is a present tense and this is used morely, uh, mostly for uh, the universal truths you know what are universal truths right one example can be the sun rises in the east even if you go to japan or even if you go to the other parts of the world you will hear everyone saying that the sun rises in the east all all your life you have been hearing of that and you have never heard anyone saying the sun rises in the west right that is something that we don't even expect and so for universal truths like that which is accepted all over the world we use mostly for those kind of things the teacher says the sun rises in the east even in the indirect speech the same thing will be applied the teacher says that the sun rises in the east and one word that is t-h-a-t that in all your indirect speech you have to use the word that okay in all your indirect speech sentences you have to use the word that the teacher says that please do not put another comma here because in your direct speech it's like this the teacher says and then it starts with an inverted comma right but in your indirect speech you have no right to do that so what i want you to know here is in the indirect speech you have no right to put a comma unless it is in between the sentences or even if there is a comma in the question because you will always or most of the time you will find a comma in the direct speech questions even if you change it you cannot bring in the same comma and you have to change everything into the past tense why because unless it is a universal truth that is the rule for narration narration or speech i want you to keep this in mind there are some exercises that follows in the following pages but i will not be doing everything i just want to read out a question for all of us so that you will have a better idea of what it is I want you to turn to page number 128. Page number 128. Rewrite these sentences using indirect speech. Question number one. He said, I am working in the Park Street office today. I am working in the Park Street office today. So our, our answer will be like this. He said that he was working in the Park Street office that day. Remember, I changed the word today into that day some rules are given there in the explanation of our book if we get time in the next class i will touch a little bit on these exercises again but i would expect you to read that because today will be changed to that day and yesterday would be changed to previous day there are some words that you need to make changes here and i want you to pay a very careful attention to this kind of words because even if you get the rough idea of what direct and indirect speech is it will always go wrong unless you pay special attention to the minor things that we have just explained we consider it minor but it may not be minor in the case of grammar because these are the areas where it will score you mark and not only with the marks it will also help you to write better languages better english and this is not only for english it applies to all other languages you have languages in your mother tongue you have hindi and it goes on so what i want you to do is please pay special attention to the small things in the study of grammar because that will score that will help you score good marks and once again i'm repeating that you have to go through the explanations that are given in the book i cannot explain everything step by step because you have to do some readings too because if i explain everything i'm just spoon feeding you which will not help you for your future endeavors and i want you to keep that in mind we will, i will see you next class with another chapter and another topic thank you